Welcome! In this presentation, we will walk you through the user access mapping template to guide you on the proper use and filling out this Excel worksheet. Mapping of individual users to enterprise roles is the last step of the systematic approach to user access mapping. In another word, you're arriving at this stage after you have completed the as-is analysis, defined the to-be model in Emoja, and mapped the enterprise roles to the entity or org unit according to the to-be model. Carefully and precisely filling out this mapping template will help you ensure that the users are mapped to the correct roles and that all the necessary information for a proper user configuration have been provided so that they will be able to execute the system tasks smoothly upon going live. First, let's take a look at this mapping template and see its structure. At the bottom of the template, you will see four tabs. Instructions, Mapping Template, Role Composition, and Roles and Mapping Hints. The Instruction tab provides a description of the information requested under columns A to N of the mapping template. This column, the column D, specifies which fields are mandatory or required for specific roles and which ones are optional. Please fill out all the information as much as you can. This will facilitate user data analysis and validation, user workflow configuration, and subsequent upload into the system. Most importantly, this helps ensure that the user will have the proper access upon going live. The Mapping Template tab is the major tab of the workbook, which you will be dealing with most of the time during the mapping process. It's important to note that the line between column Q and column R divides up the matrix into two parts. On the left-hand side, you will be filling staff members' personal and organizational information. On the right-hand side is where you map staff members to their roles in Emoja. So please don't be overwhelmed when you first see the mapping matrix. Once you know it consists of the two parts, you can use the freeze panes function in Excel to easily navigate between the left side and the right side. Now, let's move on to the Role Composition tab. Particularly for UE1 roles, the Role Composition tab identifies the main roles and the sub-roles associated to them. For example, a user mapped to the role of Benefits Insurance Administrator will automatically receive the roles of Benefits Display and Benefits Reports. When assigning roles to a user, you only need to mark an X to the main role and there is no need to do the same thing for the sub-roles. On the mapping template, we color-coded the roles to differentiate the main roles from the sub-roles. Namely, blue signifies a main role, gray means the role is currently not available for mapping, and black means it's a sub-role or standalone role, which can be individually mapped to a user whose function requires access to that role. Familiarizing yourself with the role description and mapping guidance, as well as reading the related comments on the mapping template, will help facilitate your mapping for individual users and avoid mistakes that could waste your time in correcting mapping back and forth. The tab Roles and Mapping Hints provides brief information regarding role mapping, including information based on feedback received from process experts on mapping restrictions, prerequisite roles, required data, etc. Let's take, for example, the mapping of an employee named Victoria Wang. The first column asks for her EIDMS or the Unite Identity. It is a unique combination of letters and or numbers. This information is critical for providing user access to Emoja. One of the main issues encountered during C3 Go Live was that users could not access the system due to improper or lack of EIDMS. Therefore, never ignore the importance of ensuring that your staff members have obtained and activated their EIDMS or Unite identity, because a lot of subsequent activities, such as training, communication, Emoja access, will depend on it. Continuing with our example, let's say Victoria Wang's EIDMS is W Victoria 8. She is a G7 finance assistant at ASCAP with duty station Bangkok. Her index number is 423912 and her email address is victoria.wang at un.org. The information mentioned above is relatively easy to fill out. You might find it a little trickier to fill out the columns for fund type and fund in column M, fund center in column N, threshold in column O, and delegation in column P. If you need information or clarification on what some of these fields mean, 
please refer to the instruction tab mentioned previously. For roles that require certifying or approving authority, columns M, N, O, and P have to be completed properly. Otherwise, it creates problem for the workflow configuration, resulting in requests that could not be handled. For UE1, those roles are OM7, OM Certifying Officer, TV7, which is Travel and Shipment Approver, formerly known as Travel Certifying Officer, TV9, Travel Processing Officer with SG, DSG, PGA, TV10, Travel Processing Officer, no SG, DSG, PGA, TV11, Travel Claims Processor, and TV12, Travel Ticket Processor. Continuing with the example of Ms. Wang, her business area is R400. Her fund type and fund are 10 UNA, 20 QSA, 32 BKT, 64 ROA. Her fund centers are 11514, 11515, and 11527. She has the delegation of authority of approving officer with a threshold of 1 million US dollars. As you can see, we have input information in the corresponding columns for our hypothetical user. Once we fill out the fundamental information for our staff member, let's go ahead and look at the role mapping part. First and foremost, please be aware that the information contained under the tab Roles and Mapping Hints have also been reflected within comment boxes in this tab. By moving your mouse to the upper right corner, see the red flag? The mapping hint will appear to indicate whether the role is ready for mapping. Some will say, placeholder or under development. Do not map until further notice, or simply do not map. For certain roles, as in the case of manager self-service roles, it gives a brief role description. For example, it describes that the OM manager role is for a manager who has the authority to request creation and extension for positions. From this short description, we can tell what responsibilities does this role entail, and typically who in the organizational hierarchy will be having this function. For our example, Ms. Wang, who is a finance assistant, she should not be mapped to this role as her function and grade level do not correspond to the task of OM manager. As mentioned earlier, the role have been color-coded. Blue signifies a main role, gray means the role is currently not available, and black means it's a sub-role as part of the role composition or standalone role that can be individually mapped to a user. Also notice that the roles are grouped according to functional areas, including benefits and insurance, payroll, travel, etc., and they are marked in different colors. The first group of roles here are benefits and insurance roles, or BN roles, labeled from BN01, BN02, all the way through BN13. The next group relates to payroll roles, coded as PY, and the final group here is manager self-service roles, coded as MS. If a user is assigned to the role, simply mark the cell with an X. Again, looking back to our example of Ms. Wan, whose function involves travel claims processing, she has been mapped to the roles of travel claims processor, namely TV11, and travel ticket processor, namely TV12. Notice that when you move your mouse to the upper right corner and see the red flag, it tells you that the role is typically for user in finance, and that the user mapped to the role require delegation of approving authority NFA, meaning she should have the AP Approver role as prerequisite. Since there are no other roles that correspond to the function of Ms. Wang, the user mapping for her is complete. Finally, please be aware of the naming convention of your mapping submission. The name of the file you submit needs to follow a certain format. Here, we have it show up on the screen, which is entity underscore UE1 user access mapping matrix underscore V as in version, followed by year, month, and date. Okay, you have finished watching the mini presentation on Umoja user access mapping template. Here, we have listed some of the important links and resources, and please feel free to refer to iSeq for more audio and visual learning resource. Thanks for your attention.